I want to welcome all of His Glory Ministry as we uh, continue our series in the book of Isaiah. Tonight we'll be in Isaiah 56, and as we always do, we pray that the Holy Spirit will come down from east to west to north to south to be the true teacher in the living Word of God, which is our Savior, Christ the Lord. Okay, the prophet Isaiah in 56 uh, is now opening up the door through God, God speaking to his prophet. Again, remember in Amos uh, 3 through 7, God does not do anything unless he uh, lets his, his uh, bondservants, his prophets, know first. So he's telling, foreshadowing uh, of, of the Messiah who would be a redeemer to the Gentiles. Yes, here in the Old Testament, we're talking about the foreigners of the land. And you can see that all through the law, too. There's this misconception there's this misconception from people uh, because of denominational teaching, because they don't get into the Old Testament, that the Old Covenant was just for the, the Jews. But all through the Torah, all through the law, there was ways for the, Lord, for the foreigners of the land, um, the aliens or what they were called, they were the Gentiles, that if they came in and, and did the will of the Lord and sought the will of the Lord's face, they were treated just like a, a, a Jewish person because of their heart. And they uh, could participate in the festivals, they could participate uh, and being obedient to the Lord. And uh, it was all about love. It was a love relationship that was open. But now the Lord is showing us through the prophet Isaiah that it's really opening the door to the Gentiles in the time that is coming. Uh, the time that we have now with, you know, with the start of it with Pentecost, uh, when Peter saw the, the sheet that came down in the book of Acts and says, go Peter, kill. Um, uh, and Peter says, no, I'd, I've never eaten anything unclean. He says, well, God has made uh, clean is 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 clean, so he's saying that's opening up the door to uh, salvation to the Gentiles, and that's what the Book of Acts is all about, and the Apostle Paul being called to the to to the Gentiles. Okay, so Isaiah fifty six one. Thus says the Jehovah, keep justice and do righteousness. That's always been from 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 the beginning. Keep justice, be obedient to his precepts and commandments, and do righteousness. How do we do righteousness? It's not being a good person because none of us can fulfill the law. Do righteousness means, as it says, of, of Abraham. It was a credit to Abraham to be righteous by his faith. So how do we do righteous? We do righteous because of love, and we do righteousness because of our faith in God the Father and the Messiah, Jesus Christ. That's what becomes righteous. For my salvation is about to come. Salvation to the Gentiles. Yes, eternal life that will come through his son, Jesus Christ and my righteousness to be revealed. The righteousness to be revealed to the Gentiles is through Jesus Christ. The righteousness to be revealed to his chosen Israel is the Messiah, is, is, is the Christ in the Greek. And um, it is uh, my righteousness to be revealed, meaning, meaning uh, the, the, the salvation, uh, meaning from uh, of, 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 of faith and love. That's what it's all about. Faith was what made Abraham righteous because of love first and then faith that God said he would do what he did. And, and Abraham trusted God and that's why it was a credit to him to be righteous. Verse two, blessed is the man who does this. So it's saying if we are obedient, keep justice, have faith and love in the Lord most high and keep his obedience, be obedience to his, 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 his commandments and his precepts. Blessed is the man that falls to all of us, whether you're Jew or Gentile. Once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we are all of one body, no matter what, we're, what color we are, pink, red, blue, black, white, green, tan, whatever. It doesn't matter to God. He sees the heart, and the heart is scarlet, scarlet of the blood, the blood that's redeemed through his son, Jesus Christ. And that is how we become sons and daughters of the Most High, and it's through that way. And the blesses the man who does this. I mean, so we just can't sit back and, and eat Cheetos. We got to walk along the way with the Lord and be obedient to him. And the son of man who lays hold on it and who keeps from defiling the Sabbath and keeps his hand from doing any evil. He says, obey my, my precepts, my commandments, my Sabbath. Be obedient. And Jesus tells us in the Gospels what the Sabbath was created for. The Sabbath was created for man. So we're not supposed to be legalistic about the Sabbath. Um, but we have to do it in the eyes of how Jesus said. And why did God give us the Sabbath? God gave us the Sabbath for two, two major reasons. One, to rest our physical body. But more importantly than resting the physical body is to regenerate our spirit with the Lord through our, 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 our soul and our spirit through meditation and dwelling on him and not be distracted by outwardly works that we have to do in the world. 
that we can focus on him and give him glory. That's why in ancient Israel, that when uh, the, a man and a woman became married, the first year of their marriage, they took a, a, um, a sabbatical. That's where the term came from, Sabbath, sabbatical. And so they would give them money that they would live uh, in their father's house, the, the, male father, or the, the male's uh, father's house. And uh, they would live to, together a year, meditating on the Lord, getting their spiritual life right, getting their marriage right before they went out and worked the, in the land because it was more important to God to get them spiritually together and united in their marriage and have agape love for the Lord and through their marriage so that they could uh, withhold it. Uh, keep his hand on doing evil, so staying away from doing evil. Verse three, do not let the son of the foreigner who has joined himself to Jehovah, the son of the foreigner, that means it's opening up the door for the Gentile to come in, who has joined himself to Jehovah, speak saying, the Jehovah has utterly separated me from his people, nor let the eunuch say, here I am a dry tree. So it's not separation anymore. The door is open for the Gentiles, it's open to all mankind, no matter what color, race, tongue you speak, we all become one through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And he says, here I am, a dry tree. Dry tree is an uh, uh, expositional constancy of dry being without oil. So if you're without oil, that means you're not filled with the Holy Spirit. Olive oil is a representative of oil. And uh, remember in uh, Ezekiel 37, dry bones, there was no spirit in the bones, they were dry. And some, if something's dry, it's dying. Remember Jesus said that if the, tri the tree is not bearing fruit, it'll shrivel up and we cut it off and throw it into the fire. It's dry, only, only dry wood burns. And if you are a green wood, that means you're filled with water, you're growing. You're either growing or dying in your walk with the Lord. And we wanna be always growing and having the spirit of the Lord in us and be filled with that. So that he says, here I am, a dry tree. We don't wanna be a dry tree. We wanna be filled with the Holy the Holy Spirit, the olive oil, and let our tree continue to bear fruit in the name of the Lord. Verse four, for thus says Jehovah to the eunuchs who keep my Sabbath and choose what pleases me and hold fast my covenant. Hold fast to the covenant that I've given, uh, everlasting covenant, three everlasting covenants, the everlasting covenant to the land, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the Gentiles to be grafted in, that we could be into the uh, into the pillar of the Most High God in the, in the New Jerusalem, which we see in a Revelation in the Church of Philadelphia. The Davidic covenant to fulfill um, what, what the, the God's promise to David, meaning the millennial reign that Jesus Christ will be the King of Kings and Lord of hosts for the thousand year reign. And those who have done the will of the Lord will have their crowns and be used in his New Jerusalem and have authority. That's what he's referring to. And the covenant that was talked about in Jeremiah 31, 31. Well, what covenant is that? He says, I will give you a new covenant, better than the old covenant, meaning the covenant of the law. This covenant, the new covenant in Jeremiah 31, 31, and there's God using a pun again, because 31 in, the, in, in Judaism is the number of Jehovah, number of God, Hashim. That is his number. If you take the numerical of Hebrew, which they say is the unpronounceable name of Yahweh, uh, it, it comes up to 31, so that's the number of 31. Uh, 3131 is Jeremiah, which is no coincidence. Again, the rabbis say coincidence is not a kosher word. And uh, so in that 3131, Jeremiah says there will be a new covenant better than the old. And that covenant is the Christ, the Son of God. God in the flesh is, and, and the visible of the invisible God, as Paul says that. It was, uh, I believe it was Martin Luther, um, yeah, it was Martin Luther, tried to get the book of Esther thrown out of the canon uh, back years and years and years ago. And, and the reason why is that um, he it, it says that it's a lovely story, but there's nothing talking about uh, Jehovah at all. And uh, this is just like God, you know, uh, it just God is so precise. And there's something called the rabbi code that we've talked about in some of our, our, our studies before. You drop the seventh letter and you, it, it, in the, the original Hebrew scroll, it gives you a message. And the word Jehovah, meaning God in three, God uh, is there 31 times to show Martin Luther or whoever comes up against God's word and what he has, he has uh, ordained to be part of his canon that he is everywhere on every single pages. That's how precise God is. He's just amazing. Hold fast my covenant, a covenant being of, of Christ the Lord in Jeremiah 31, 31. Even to them, I will give in my, in my house, even to them, I'll give in my house. And Jesus says, I go away and pre 
prepare, uh, prepare a place for you. If, I, if my father hadn't said it so, it would not be true. And he did. He went and made a place for every single person ever born. And the, there is going to be houses empty in his great mansion because they didn't take uh, the Lord and they didn't accept the free gift of free will and accept the son, Jesus Christ. And that was part of the wedding ceremony as well. Uh, that when uh, the, they got engaged, the, the, the male would go back to his father's house and build another room onto the house. So when he came back and they got married, they would live in that room on their father's house for a year under a sabbatical to uh, meditate on the Lord and get their marriage onto the right track. So everything done that Jesus says is not just a figure of speech. There's literalness to that based on the Jewish wedding ceremony. Uh, that's why we can know the time, uh, the, the, the season that the Lord will come back. We won't know the day or the hour, as the scripture says, but it's my conjecture that we will know within a two to three hour window based on the, the wedding ceremony of the Jewish festival and him showing us the parable of the virgins. Um, that had their lamps lit and did not have their lamps lit, re referring to the wedding ceremony, the, the harpazo of the church. Even to them I will give my house and within my walls a place and a name. Walls and a place and name. Remember in the Church of Philadelphia, it says, those who overcome and do not, not deny my word and do not deny my name, I will have a pillar and they will be given a new name and my city Jerusalem. So he's talking again, Isaiah is here all about. Better than the sons and daughters to give them an everlasting name that shall not become moth. He says, even better than the sons and daughters of, of, of my heritage that didn't that denied me because of their hardness and they didn't seek the love relationship that I wanted from them from day one. They 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 they, they rebuke me and it shall never be cut off. So once you have Jesus Christ in your heart and soul and mind, and you're starting to get the fruit of the Spirit and walking in Him and the sanctification process to get the will of the Lord in your life, to do His will to your will, to create a perfect will, you will never be cut off, says the Lord Most High. Praise His name. Also the sons of the foreigner, again referencing the, the, uh, the Gentiles. All through the Old Testament has reference of this. Who joins to the Jehovah to serve Him? joins to the Jehovah to serve him, the foreigners. Doesn't, it's not just Israel. This covenant is for all through the Messiah, Jesus Christ, to serve him and love the name of the Jehovah. Love him name. Do not deny his name and do not deny his word, as Jesus says in, in the church of Philadelphia. And to be his servants, we're called to be servants of the most high God. Bond servants, as Paul says, I'm a bond servant. I choose to serve. I get the mark of my ear of the owl to the doorpost because I choose to serve. The Shemitah year came up and I was free from my master, but I didn't want to be free. I wanted to serve my master forever being a bond servant. Everyone who keeps from defiling the Sabbath, meditating spiritually and physically on the Lord, being obedient to his precepts and commandments and hold fast my covenant my everlasting covenant, the Jeremiah 31, 31 covenant through my son. The covenant is through the Messiah. We talked earlier in one of our studies that there is a dual covenant between the Jews and there's a dual covenant between the Gentiles. It's mutually exclusive, but it's through one door. And that door is the Messiah. That door is the shepherd. That door is the, the Mashiach Nakik in, 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 in the Hebrew. And for the Gentiles, it is Christ the Lord, Jesus Christ in the, in, the, in, the, in the Greek. Praise his name. Even then, I will bring to my holy mountain, the Mount, Mount Zion, the, the city of Jerusalem, the, the, the three holy mountains uh, that the Lord has, the Mount of Olives with Jesus going to come back and split open and walk into the eastern gate of the temple. He will have, and, will, and then the Mount Zion, and then where the Temple Mount is Mount Moriah. Those are the, the, the trinity of God's holy mountains there. And make them joyful in the house of prayer. Joyful in the house of prayer. That's what God wants us to do, is do a house of prayer. My house shall be called a house of prayer. And that's one of the things that the Lord gave to my mother when we were putting the seven creed statement together for the ministry of his glory. Uh, God gave us seven. Seven is for completion. There's no mistake about that. Uh, the Bible is, number one is the Bible is the literal and fallible word of God. That's our first creed. Number two, my, high, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Prayer is the foundation of all ministry. It is the foundation. The Lord's been speaking to me a lot r recently on Sabbaths. And now it's coming to my Sabbaths are being every day, meaning meditating on the Lord and, re and just being still before him and listen to his voice. And um, 
this is something I've been truly bad at for the last few years. I don't spend time praying enough and just listening to the Lord and praying in the spirit. The last few days I've been praying deeply in the spirit and the man, the word, the, the, the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost is coming upon and just exciting things and just amazing. That's what he wants us to do. We are, uh, we are led by the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the spirit. That's what it says. That is for today. God has done that for today. It says so in the, the prophet Joel. It says so in the book of Acts. Don't let anybody tell you that the spirit, the gifts of the spirit are not for today. That's not, that's not biblically true. Uh, we have the love for the father, uh, for the love, the, the poor, the elderly, and the widow, and the, the, uh, the orphans. Number five, we shall be called servants of the most high God, referring to what he was talking about. Servants of the most God, high God, we are here to serve him in ministry. And number six, in everything we do, we glorify uh, our Lord. It is our love for him that compels us. That's the sixth of our, our, our creedal statement of his glory, his, his ministry, his kavod, his literal essence. He named it 10, 12, 13 years ago before I could even dreamt of that. And then seven is the fivefold, which is grace, ministry, the apostles, the prophets, the, uh, the evangelists, and the pastors, and the teachers. So that's the seven creed talking again that God is talking about the house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted at my altar for the house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations. Yes, there will be sacrifices again. We know in Ezekiel 40 through 48 in the millennial reign, there will be sacrifices again. We know that Jesus says, as the prophet Daniel says, the abomination, abomination of desolate. Uh, will be halfway through the tribulation. So there will be a temple again. The Temple uh, Institute is ready to build the temple and at any time now. It's ready to go. And nothing's holding that up except for them to just to, to get the courage to go up there and build it. Um, every article is there for it. And matter of fact, the last, uh, another article I just read from Israel Times uh, two days ago that they had the first, uh, the first harvest of the grapes uh, to, make, to create the, uh, the, the wine that's needed for um, the temple, and uh, they got 30 bottles out of it, and uh, they were saying it's the best wine they've, they've ever experienced. So every element of the temple is, in, in, uh, is ready to go, even growing the red heifers to, to, to sprinkle the, the, the ashes of the red heifer, everything. God has put into his time. So that's why we know the time of the end is soon because more Jews are coming to Christ to become Messianic Jews in the history of the world. And also we're seeing nations all over, all over of Islam coming in to uh, know the most high God through his son, Jesus Christ. We're seeing his glory every day. I'm seeing three, four, five, six, and I don't know how many thousands are taking our altar calls. It's all to the glory of the Lord. He's moving fast. Um, ver verse eight. The Jehovah Elohim who gathers the outcasts of Israel says, Yet I will gather to him others besides those who are gathered to him. Meaning gather the others, meaning open it up to the Gentiles. Why Paul went out and did it. And why Jesus said before he left, I am going to give you this commandment. It's the commandment of the church. This is the most important thing on the church is bring in the lost. On our website, we, says that we, we uh, quote, uh, the harvest is full and the workers are few. That is so true. People don't want to do the work of the Lord. They don't want to do the heavy lifting. They just want to sit back and watch. God, this is not a, 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 a spectator, spectator sport. God wants you to participate. He asks you to participate. Don't sit back and eat Cheetos. Walk hand in hand with the Lord, as it says in Amos. He, the Lord does not do anything unless he tells his bondservants, his prophets first, and guides them and walks with them hand in hand. That's what he wants us to do in this, this latter day. Go out and bring in the harvest. Play, for, for, preach the gospel, as Jesus said to his disciples, from east to west to north to south to every create, create, creature, is what he said, to everyone. And uh, that is exactly what his glory ministry is doing today. We're in every single country, east, west, north, south, in the world, and growing mightily. And this is nothing compared to what the Lord has in store for this ministry for 2017, called by his name, and it's all for his glory. He gathers the outcasts of Israel, as he said, and yet gathers to him and others besides those who are gathered. Open it up for the Gentiles. Verse 9, all you beasts of the field come to devour, all you beasts in the forest. His watchmen are blind, meaning the ones that are called are blind. They're not paying attention. I mean, God always is talking, the Father's talking about in the Old Testament. My people are blind. 
And, 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 and Paul talks about the blindness of the Jewish people until God uh, reveals himself. And we see that they get it in Revelation 4 on that the remnant of the Jews will understand. This is in, my, in, in, in the prophets, in, in my affliction. Uh, they'll seek my face and I will return to the place I left. What does he mean? His kavod, his glory, will return back to the place he left, meaning his beloved city. He moves to and fro and uh, he will go back to the nation of Israel. And that remnant of Israel will get it right the second time that they'll know the Mashiach, Nakik, the, the Bar David, will be coming soon. Matter of fact, all the major rabbis in, in Jerusalem are calling for the eminency of uh, imminent return of Bar, Bar David, uh, the Messiah Bar David, means son of David, literally in the line of David. Uh, they are blind, they are ignorant, they are dumb dogs, they cannot bark, sleeping, lying down, loving to slumber. They're relaxing. They're not, they're blind. They're sitting back and that's what the church is too. Oh boy, what a wonderful Sunday uh, that is. Let me get my latte, let me get my donut, let me sit back. Oh, that was great, let's go. And they start arguing on the way and uh, they think they did their part. That's not church. That's like me go stand in my garage and say, I'm a car. No, church is you. The church is, is not a building. Nothing wrong with going to the building, but the love of the Lord is number one. He wants you to be active with your heart and not to slumber. He's saying, walk in my way, do not slumber, do not fall asleep, be sober, and open your eyes and listen to your ears and hear my voice. I'm calling to you in these end times. You will, yes, these are greedy dogs which never have enough. They're greed, greed got over them. Remember the Pharisees and the Sadducees was about greed, power and position instead of love. And some of these churches today are talking about prosperity gospel, greed, more money, more churches, more buildings more basketball courses, more, more, more kitchens, but no call for the Lord, no call of altar calls. God through Jesus Christ gave us a commandment. He said, preach the gospel from east to west to north to south to every creation. He means go out and help bring in the harvest. The, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Roll up your sleeves, it's time to do it. We don't sit back and bark orders as a barking dog, as Isaiah has been taught by the Lord, we roll up our sleeves and we do it. We do the will of the Lord as a servant would, not that we're high and mighty. Church is a church of, of, of is a hospital of, of, of fallen sinners, not a museum of saints. We need to wake up church, open our eyes, don't slumber anymore. Open up the spirit of the Lord. Do not deny the spirit of the Lord. Do not deny the gifts of the spirit for today. If you can deny them in your denominational teaching, if you deny them, you're cutting off your people from knowing the literal uh, essence of God and the Holy Spirit. And Jesus says that's the only unforgivable sin is blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. We want the Holy Spirit. We need to pray to the Holy Spirit, activate the Holy Spirit, which you'll never have enough. And they are shepherds who, can, who cannot understand. They all look to their own way. They're all going their own way. They're not following the, the, the one shepherd, which is the Messiah. They're living for the world and they're going their own way because they think they know it better. Just as we said yesterday in Isaiah 55, it said, God says, my ways are higher than your ways. So why are you going your own way? You think you know it better than me? You want to live for this world? The purpose of this world is salvation. The purpose of this world is to change your, in, your corruptible heart into a new heart to know who I am, the living God, and have a relationship with me and give me all your sins because nobody can make it. No man can make it. And I've given you a way out through salvation through my son, Jesus Christ, so that, I can be, that you can be reconciled with me forever through my son. That's salvation. Once salvation takes in, that's when we go to work. That's when we go and find out the will of the Lord. And that's where we go in our wilderness period, where he molds us, he shapes us, he gets rid of the yeast, gets rid of the sin, gets rid of all the self in that, and, and builds us and gets us ready to be used for his glory, to bring in his harvest from east to west to north to south, so that when we get to the Bema seat, he says and looks in our eyes and say, well done, my faithful servant. You've done all the things that I've asked you to do out of love because you were a bond servant, not because you had to, not because you did it for any other reason but love. Praise his name. They all looked their own way for one for his own gain from, from his own territory, always worrying about self, 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 self. And we gotta get rid of self. The first act of walking with God 
in a holy uh, relationship marriage with him forever is getting up the ego, the self. That was the first sin, pride. Satan fell because I will be like the most high God. I will get to the heights of the most high God. Come, verse 12, one says, I will bring wine and we will fill ourselves with intoxicating drink. That's why he's saying, be sober, be sober and be waiting for the Lord to come. Do not let anything uh, touch your intelligence, reasoning and judgment so that you don't miss the coming of the Lord and you miss the signs and you fall asleep. And as he says, and we will fill ourselves with uh, intoxicating drink. Tomorrow will be as today as is much more abundant. You'll see, well, let's we'll just drink and be merry for tomorrow will be like today and then it will be more abundant. No, there may not be a tomorrow. Time's running out. We don't know when the harpazo of the church is gonna happen. We don't know when the fullness of the Gentiles. We see all the signs that the Christ has told us that have to happen have happened. And uh, so it's, it, it, could be an, it could be any time. Uh, he wants us to know the signs and the seasons. And he t clearly tells us in Matthew 24 what the signs and the seasons are. There is no, unequivocally no ifs, ands, or buts. They're here. It is uh, the last outpouring of the Holy Spirit that I believe is going to happen in the Jubilee year this year. And then at any time, he can come. So we can't wait, put off to tomorrow what we can do today. Tomorrow will be as today, as they said, postponing. Satan's favorite day of the week is tomorrow. Get right with Jesus tomorrow. Find out who this Jesus is tomorrow. Accept Jesus as your Savior tomorrow. I'll learn more about it tomorrow. Satan wants you to keep putting off tomorrow because tomorrow may never come. And that's exactly what God is telling us through his, his, his hardened heart of, of the people of Israel in this part. But it also is not just uh, Israel. This is all the Gentiles too. For whatever religion, whatever uh, uh, God you have, whatever uh, worldly thing that you're living for, whether it's humanism, we're living to uh, put yourself first. I mean, we do all these selfies all over the world because everything in the world's culture is all about puffing up oneself. God wants humility. He wants us humbled. And boy, God does, if you don't humble yourself before the Lord, he has a way of, of, of getting you humble real quick. And uh, he got me humble real quick. And when I started getting out of it, he got me humbled again and again and again until finally this knucklehead started figuring out, uh, when I get out of line, there is a repercussion. It's a lot better to follow his ways than my ways because his ways are higher than my ways, as it says in Isaiah 55. And if I go his way, it's gonna go smoother. And if I love him and I follow him and get into his word and get into his prayer, things will go well. It says here in Isaiah 56, you will, that man will be blessed. As David, see, we look at the life of David. David, every time he sought the face of the Lord with his heart, soul, and mind, it went well with him. Every time he worked in the carnal mind for pride or for purpose or, or because of self or of, of, of sexual uh, desires, it went horribly wrong. But David got it right. He humbled himself. He knew the, the Lord and he sought, sought the face of the Lord and had great love for the Lord. And the Lord knew his heart and the Lord reconciled. So if he can reconcile David and he can reconcile this David, which is the chief of sinners, as Paul said too, and he can, and he can and Jacob and Moses and all the people. That's what makes the Bible so just absolutely loving and, 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 and uh, so real because it is real. As we said, it's the literal infallible word of God. It's because every single one of God's people in, in the um, Bible, they were fallen. They had, they had, they had issues. They, they screwed up. They sinned. But God is a loving God. And he held out his heart to each and every one of them if they humbled themselves and called him by name and sought his face with their heart and gave up self, he gave them restoration. He gave them resto uh, being restored to him forever. He gave them eternal life. And now he gives us eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. And we pray that all over his glory nation, to every single person, Jew or Gentile, that there is one Messiah, there is one Christ, there is a dual covenant, but there is one way, one shepherd. We pray that you uh, offer up this prayer of salvation, dear Jesus, I believe that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of hosts. I ask for you to come into my heart and my life, and I ask for you to forgive me of my sins. I repent of my sins, and I want to be obedient to you and follow your ways always. If you pray that in your heart and you uh, motion that with your lips, you have salvation eternally with the Most High God through his Son, Jesus Christ. It is the only way, because Isaiah is showing us this in 56. This is way back in the Old Testament. 
uh, that is the way, the truth, and the life is the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And now if you prayed that prayer, you have salvation. But now the work starts. Get into the word of God. Seek his face in prayer. And he will show you the will, his will for you and your life until he comes home. We don't have much time. So we have to act uh, with a sense of urgency. We pray that Isaiah 56 has been a blessing to you. And may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob bless you till next time. God bless.